Thank you very much, Yussi, for the kind uh, introduction. And then, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, welcome to my uh, uh, installation lecture. So the uh, title is this uh, Augmented Radio Environments. Um, when I was in, in Lisbon, I mean, it was in February when I was asked to give this title. And then probably I can talk something about this one. But then after studying a bit about the augmented reality and then also the other aspects, uh, it, it turned out that the, uh, it's, probably it's not that easy or it may be too bit, bit far-fetched from, 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 for the radios to, to go to this augmented reality. And then we finally came up, I mean, I finally came up with a bit, you know, customized, compromised idea of the virtual on, and augmented radio environments. So it means that the, I'm still in the process of learning and then catching or absorbing many other things than my major field. So I slightly changed my title here and then continue my talk. Right, so talking about the uh, augmented reality or the uh, virtual reality, um, these days I'm, I'm very happy to see this uh, Nokia product uh, Ozo. I think uh, some of you may have seen it probably, but not many of you have seen it. I mean, this is a tool for making the uh, virtual reality. And then this, compo this is composed of a, a camera which records the reality. And then this reality is like, how to say, emulated or is realized through this uh, headset by this uh, subject of the virtual reality or the augmented reality. So, for example, I mean, we can experience like this person. I mean, this person is experiencing, for example, like uh, swimming in, in a coral sea or going to Hawaii or enjoying uh, lunch in, in Helsinki or whatever. And then this uh, augmented reality actually even extends this reality so that, for example, now if I see some restaurant or some sceneries in, in, in some Helsinki areas, then this tells that, okay, there's a restaurant there and then don't go there because the load is slippery and so forth. But then my major is like radio research. So I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, is this something which we can apply for the radio devices or radio engineering in general? Then I think it is possible to do it. Or I think we have been doing actually similar things, surprisingly, for many years already. For example, we have this, uh, radio device like mobile phone, which we are using now. And then for this mobile phone, the virtual reality or the augmented reality is of significant importance. Because for the virtual reality context, if the, ma the manufacturers or the vendors of the mobile device want to test if this really works in Helsinki, if this works really in London, this really works in Hawaii, then we, somebody or somehow we have to test it. But I mean, if you are in the laboratory, then it's not easy to, to, to try it. Hence, there's a technology that requires this mobile device to work or not in the laboratory environment is very crucial, which is similar to this virtual reality that we use nowadays for, for entertainment or the, um, for the movies and so forth. And then if we have the augmented reality, for example, I mean, to, to tell this mobile phone that, okay, we can do this much better thing by doing something, then it is even a better opportunity for the mobile phone to make a better communications. So therefore, um, in the radio engineering perspectives, this virtual reality or the augmented reality is really the way to go or the, the technology that the device vendors really require. So if we are just taking the context of the human virtual reality or the augmented reality, then it may look like this. I mean, the mobile phone wears some headset. And then also we need a camera to re record the reality and then to place some external information on top of this reality to extend it, to augment it. But then how those two headsets and then camera look like in terms of the radio engineering. That's something which I'm going to introduce a bit for the rest of the 15 minutes. 
Right, so let us first clarify about what is the reality. I mean, for human being, the reality is this one. I'm now giving a lecture, I see you, and then I see temperature, or I feel temperature, and then I hear something from you, and so forth. But what does this radio device see in practice? They actually see many, many different devices. For example, probably in this room, uh, there are hundreds or probably hundreds of radio devices which is communicating at the same time, always trying to reach somebody and then trying to receive something from the base station and so forth. So it is really full of interference. We see a lot of things or we hear a lot of things and so forth. But then, what is particular, what is peculiar for the radio engineering? Probably, I mean, probably this is not very special to the radio engineering only, but they, the radio devices see the physical environment with respect to the wavelengths. This is a very, how to say, important concept in the radio engineering, which is similarly to the, how to say, us. When I was a very young kid, then probably I was this height, and then reaching this table was not very easy. But I mean, as a young, like as a mature adult, now I can reach this table very easily. So it's the same. I mean, I'm going to describe in the next slide a bit. But depending on the wavelength, the wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency. And the frequency that we use is, for example, the 1 gigahertz. And then nowadays, we go up to 100 gigahertz for the future radio communication systems. And then if the radio frequency is 300 megahertz, then the wavelength is this big. So probably this kind of like small glass, this is nothing. This is too tiny for the radio waves to notice. But if it comes to the 60 gigahertz radio, where the frequency of the wavelength is five millimeters, then this is already very big. So this makes very big difference, or this can make a big difference for high frequency radios at 60 gigs, but it doesn't make very much difference at the low frequency radios. So depending on the radio frequency that you are using or this radio device is using, the environment that you are seeing is very different. How it looks like in practice. For example, this is the same environment and then we are receiving some signal from, from a base station, let's say. This is from where the waves are coming. It's illustrated here. And then the red spot means there are a lot of energy from th those points. And then coming to the blue, it's weaker. In that case, we see the uh, top figure is like 15 gigahertz, and then the bottom figure is like 5 gigs. And you see quite a bit of difference between those two. So it means that depending on the radio frequency, what we see as the wave coming or going is this much different. And then this is the reality of the difference that this radio device wants to see if we want to emulate that, oh, I'm now using this service in Helsinki at 5 gigs and then 18 gigs or even 100 gigahertz and so forth. But how to realize? This frequency dependency in the laboratory environment is one of the challenges that we have as research item. And then also, um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, it's like the uh, environment is the interference limited. So this is the uh, picture in Tapiola, and then there are, um, actually, I don't see any radio waves myself, but if we put the radio uh, mobile phone here, then it actually hears quite a bit of things, even for the single system of the Wi-Fi. We see the um, Wi-Fi access point from Alco. Actually, there are two. And then Stockman Open and so forth and so forth. They, they are all operating at the same frequency. And they are sometimes interfering, probably sometimes not. So this is the actual environment where the mobile device is operating. How we can emulate this environment in a laboratory so that the companies want to make sure that the device is working before it is very installed, before it is very operating in those rare environment. This is the question that I'm personally interested in and then is also relevant 
in relation to the augmented reality or the virtual reality. So the virtual reality in radio, engineer, in radio engineering field actually is realized in this form, which is like quite different from the virtual reality that you see in the previous slide. So here is the, uh, sorry, the, the yellow one is the human phantom, which emulates the human body. And the next bit, there's the mobile phone listening, or this is the subject of the virtual reality of the radio environment. And then the surrounding environment is actually this those room is like a, we call the anechoic chamber, where it shuts all the energy or all the radio waves coming from outside. And then those like crosses, they are the antenna which creates specific field to the device which is holded on the, on the next to the, the, uh, the face of the human. Then the goal is to reproduce the field, the radio field here, so that, oh, as if I'm feeling that I'm now in Helsinki, probably in Helsinki we have very many interference. So yes, now I see a lot of interference. But then now moving on to the Bruka or Kusamo or, I mean, Lapland, okay, I don't see any interference because probably the simultaneously operating radio devices are small. But I, I, I don't see very much because probably the base station is too far away. And then the last example is like, okay, we, we are driving. We are driving 100 kilometers per hour. Then the signals that we see is really, really quickly fluctuating. So this kind of really different environment with different conditions of the interference is something which we want to realize in this controlled environment, which is actually not very easy already now. Um, it actually is realized in this kind of like schematic. Um, the device is in the middle, and then the surrounding antenna is generating the radio waves to the mobile, so that the mobile sees or hears the realistic field. And this field is made by, for example, the base station emulator sending some signal, which actually the mobile receives, and then it is distorted, it is modified, it is attenuated, it is rotated, and then sent to the closed by antenna to the mobile phone, and then it is sent so that this mobile phone is really feeling that, okay, now I'm in Helsinki with a lot of interference, or I'm driving now. Then I see a lot of fluctuation or differences of the energy over the time. This looks quite, um, already quite expensive or extensive too, but um, actually we are not yet, how to say, coming to the full complexity of the environment for example, because we are quite interacting with the mobile phone heavily, like talking like this or looking at like this, and sending it or how to say putting it to the pocket. And then the interaction between the human and then the mobile phone makes its characteristics quite different. Here in this case, when the finger is like attached or putting is like is covering one of the antennas, then the energy going to this direction is reduced by 99%, which is a significant actually like reduction of the energy. But this is something which we need to really simulate in this virtual reality for the radio devices. Otherwise, I mean, companies like Nokia or Samsung or Apple, they cannot really see if it really works or not. So that's one of the challenges. And also, um, we have nowadays uh, not only the mobile phone, but also like diverse types of the radio systems. First of all, this is one of the uh, very interesting example of the uh, using the wireless to transfer the video image from inside the body to the outside of the body. So we swallow some small capsule, and then it travels during, I mean, inside the, the body and then capturing the image inside, and so that, for example, there's a two more inside this body, and then, then, then take, taking that picture, and then sending that image outside the body, and then that image is captured or reconstructed outside the body, and then doctor says, oh, now there's a two more here, and so forth. Then, 
thinking about this capsule bender, and then I have this capsule. I want to test if it really works or not. Th then we cannot drink, uh, we cannot swallow the capsule every time to test every capsule, right? So in this case, uh, we need to make such a system to be able to reproduce the radio environment for the capsule, but that's not done yet. That's a research challenge really for us. That is, I mean, something which I'm interested in for the future task. And then here in Alto, actually we really had it a few years back. Um, but now we moved to Tuas building and then unfortunately we have to turn down this, system, this uh, facility because uh, we didn't have uh, uh, space and uh, unfortunately we, don't, we didn't have funding either. But now I'm trying to launch this idea um, for the, um, the uh, new department so that uh, we go for this interesting, exciting research topic. The finally, about the camera. I didn't touch upon the camera. When it comes to this uh, virtual reality, the uh, Nokia sells this Ozo camera, which captures the reality for 360 degrees of images. And then for the radio camera, actually, in order to record the reality, we have been developing actually a similar thing. I mean, I was very surprised to see this uh, Ozo camera when it is first revealed, because it look, really looks like similar, like, suckable shape to the Ozo product. And then, in the, in the same manner as Ozo, we bring this to the reality that we want to record, and then do the measurement. And that is something which we call the radio channel sounding. For example, I mean, we go to the um, Alex Center in Katu, the Narinkatli airport, and then we brought this, our Ozo camera, radio Ozo camera, and then recording the reality. So there are many people interested in, okay, what, what are you doing? So of course, everybody, I mean, and then I, th I think it was very interesting to, to see my student doing the measurement and then getting like, uh, like two euros of like some small uh, coins from, from the audiences, so to say. They really enjoyed them doing the measurement because they look quite different from the ordinary people. Yeah, and then actually I'd like to mention also that the, um, this work has been supported by the um, EU project and then also a uh, big effort from, from Nokia came because this was really relevant for the uh, radio channel, or I have to say, the next generation cellular system development. But now, I mean, in order to reproduce such a reality in the laboratory environment, there are many challenges ahead. Such a system has to cover the uh, very wide range of radio frequencies, means the different wavelengths, and also the, uh, it has to cover the really very many interferences. And we also have the diverse application areas of the wireless, and for every wireless radio device, we need to test it before we really ship it, we, if, before we really sell it. That is the need of, of the industry, especially if the device is very expensive. And then once we could reproduce this, the, um, the reality in an accurate manner, and more importantly, the cost-effective manner, then probably it's time to start the research of the uh, augmented radio environment where probably, for example, they see that, okay, there are strong energy coming from that direction, so let's look at that direction so that we can do the better communication. So, so that, like, we tell him that we can have good opportunity in some directions or some ways to do the better communications. But I would say that is like, a, like further in the future research that uh, I didn't touch upon very much here, but uh, hopefully in the installation lecture too, as a like, food professor, I may be able to reveal that aspect. And that is the end of my talk. And then, once again, uh, I'd like to thank Alto for um, welcoming me to this uh, exciting position, and then I look forward to working with you for the next years. Thank you.